Welcome back. Uh, in the last segment, we argued that uh, the code will be instantaneous as long as no code word of the code is a prefix of another code word. Um, so for example, this code here will be instantaneous as we can see that for any code word here, none of the other code word is a prefix of this code word. Um, actually, given this condition, it will imp impose some con it will impose some constraint on the length of the code word. Or more precisely, we cannot shrink the code word too much. Uh, for example, like if I have this code word C here, consider this code word C here. If I shrink this code word into two bits, um, then apparently now I have this code word C is actually a prefix of the code word of D here. Uh, it turns out that this constraint can be summarized with a simple condition known as the Crafts inequality. Um, so basically, the Crafts inequality state that if the length of a code satisfies this condition, that's to the power the length of a code word uh, and sum of all code words is bigger than, oh sorry, it should be less than or equal to one, then um, it's possible to find a code that is instantaneous. Or maybe put in another way, it will be um, a code will be instantaneous only if this class inequality is satisfied. Okay, and where this Lx here uh, is equal to the length of the code word, that's basically C x here. Um, we have to be careful though, uh, given the code that if the length profile of the code satisfies the graph inequality, it doesn't immediately mean that uh, uh, the code is instantaneous in general. Because for example, if I have this code here, if I change these bits from 1 to 0, then of course this length profile of the code doesn't change. And so it still satisfies the graph inequality. But in this case, apparently this code is not instantaneous. I'm not sure this code is not even uh, uniquely decodable as we can see that uh, coding the C uh, into uh, symbol C will get 001 and this will be equivalent to the code word of coding B and then A. Now, let's see why uh, for a code to be instantaneous that it has to satisfy the graphs inequality. It turns out that the proof is uh, rather intuitive and simple. Uh, what the main trick is, we can always map a code into um, nodes of a tree. For example, if I consider this code here, let's say I draw a tree that starting from a root node that uh, I split for all of this, let's say I will but uh, use this tree node to represent the code of A here. So I have a C A here, and then uh, I'll split into C O M one also. This will be correspond to the code word of B, and I can do another splitting here, and this node correspond to code word of C. And this will correspond to the cores of D. Now, what we can see here is that for a code to be uh, instantaneous, then we say that like none of the code can be prefix of another code. Word. What does it mean is if we start with any code word and trace it back to the wood node, then we cannot have another code word that 
stay uh, is on the weight of this branch here. The, in uh, more precisely, I cannot have a core, for example, lying here. So, or it means that, like, if I have the core is instantaneous, then apparently all the cores has to lie uh, on the leaf uh, node uh, at the leaf nodes of the core uh, of the tree. Now let's consider the deepest level. What I mean by the deepest level is basically a level containing the longest code word, uh, CD here. Or you can think of that the level, uh, LD here. And let's call this, uh, big L here. So, I want to see like what, how, uh, what is the descendants for each of the code words at this level L, big L here. So, uh, for clarity, let me just remove, just erase this uh, label of the code word here. And, okay, uh, let me just uh, show the descendant. For this guy here, it should have two descendants here. And this guy will have four descendants. And this, let me just draw a picture, triangle instead. And there should be eight descendants here. So, uh, one thing we can see that if the call is instantaneous, then all the nodes will reside on the, uh, leaf nodes. And apparently, the descendants from this leaf nodes can never intersect. So, therefore, if we sum up all the descendants, the descendants have to be less than the total possible descendants. On the other hand, if I have a code that is not instantaneous, for example, if I have another code, code word that lies here, so therefore this code word is basically a prefix of these two code words here, then apparently the descendant of this code word will be these four nodes here at level L, and I will have a double count Basically, if I sum up all the descendants, the descendants will will be bigger than the, all the possible descendants because uh, apparently in this case, uh, if I also have this one, then the total descendants from all the nodes, all the cohorts, will be um, 16 plus this fee here uh, should be 19, something like. Uh, so in any case, I guess it should be quite apparent that if the code is instantaneous, as we just said, then uh, at this level L, big L, the number of descendants, if we add up all the number of descendants from each of the code word, then it should be less than the total number of possible descendants. Or if we write it mathematically, it would be something like um, 2 to the L minus Lx, because this is the number of descendants for the node, for the code word uh, Cx, for example, if I consider the code CX, uh, code CX here, then the number of descendants apparently is just equal to, uh, 2 to the L minus LX here, that's equal to 2 to the 4 minus 2 here will be equal to 4 descendants here. And if I sum over all the cores, this should be less than the total number of possible descendants, that is 2 to the L, and this immediately gives us the graphs inequality. And uh, conversely, if we have, uh, we have given a length profile uh, of a code that we want to build, and the length profile satisfies the graphs inequality, um, it's easy to show that 
Uh, we can construct an instantaneous code out of that link profile also. Uh, for example, uh, let me just, instead of giving a proof, I'll just give a simple example. Let's say if I have LA is equal to 4, and LB is equal to 2, and LC is equal to, let's say, 2 again. And uh, let's see, I try to make up something that's good. And let's say L D is equal to 2 again. Um, L E is equal to 3. Um, okay. I'll check if this the uh, graph inequality is satisfied. Okay, graph inequality in this case 2 to the minus 4. Plus 2 to the minus 2, plus 2 to the minus 2, plus 2 to the minus 2, plus 2 to the minus 3. So this is 1 quarter, 1 quarter, 1 quarter, 1 eighth. So this gives me 1 half. And that I have, if I sum up this, I have remaining budget of 1 quarter, uh, 1 fourth. And uh, that probably make it uh, less than 1 half. Uh, less than one so uh okay it you have to trust my calculation here but let's uh it appears that it should be less than one so the cross inequality is satisfied so now let's try to build the code uh what we can do is start from the shortest uh code there that's the potential of the shortest code so let's say we start with b and let's just draw something that uh, assign a nose for B here. So we just go to the level 2 and just say we'll fill B with like this node here. And then fill C with this node here, fill D with this node here. And then we look at the next uh, shortest code that is E here. And then we just extend it. We can put E here. And then there's, we need an A here that we actually can put an A here. So apparently now, this code, or like the tree that represents the code will be instantaneous as we discussed. And actually the real, the code word, we can even write down the code word, will be, uh, let's say if we, for all the uh, upper branch, if you assign a seal and the lower branch assign with one, then we have C B is equal to seal zero, C C is equal to seal one, C D is equal to one zero, C E is equal to one one zero, C A is equal to one 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 zero. Okay, we can easily see that like uh, this is an instantaneous code.